Nice. Guys, welcome back to episode 16 with Mr. Rob Lipson, an Irish icon, influencer, <laughs> entrepreneur, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, but thank you so much for joining today. I know there's going to be so many people that are going to benefit from this and kind of get a little bit of an insight into behind the scenes as well. And I know like you've obviously got a big following on YouTube and people do know a lot about you, but I think it's important for people to see kind of the highs, the lows, and just to get an idea and summarize as much as possible, kind of where your journey started, how it all began. And I think from myself as well, being Irish, like you've stayed really humble and stay true to who you are from the get-go. And I respect that a lot. And I think it's, I think that's why obviously your journey is extremely special to Irish people as well. So I'd love you to give people a little bit of a background into where you kind of started and how this all kind of came about for sure so first of all thank you so much for having me on I've been doing the old Irish fit fam <laughs> rounds this week I was speaking <laughs> at Sean Casey's event during the week I had him on my podcast and so you know I love seeing people from Ireland doing well especially in the fitness industry because when I got into the fitness industry and we get into all that it was like pretty much non-existent. So yeah. when I see people like yourself killing it, I'm like, I get patriotic. You know, I get really happy. <laughs> yeah. So so to strip everything back, let's start back at, I think it kind of, my journey began when I was about 17 years old and mm -hmm. I was in school and I was always like the messer in class, as you can probably imagine, you know, I couldn't pay attention. And I was like, you know, typical meathead. I was uh, decent at sports. And so it was a rugby school and that, you know, to, to get better at rugby, get stronger, they sent you into the gym. And, you know, I was always like, I liked rugby. I loved it really good. And, but when I got into the weights room, I fell in love. Yeah. I, I don't know what, maybe because I'm such a narcissist. I saw myself with a pump <laughs> and I was just like, oh, wow, look at this. I can't believe this. Yeah. And, and so I was, uh, I, I took a liking to it and I, I really excelled in that. So, you know, the rugby, the skills stuff, I actually wasn't too great at, but the strength and conditioning, you know, I really enjoyed. And we all kind of like what we're good at. You know, we we like to, uh, one of the things I said to people is double down on your strengths. And then, so when I finished school, I started to pursue, you know, strength and conditioning and fitness in the gym a little bit more, getting really into it. At this stage, like social media wasn't what it is now. TikTok didn't exist. Showing my age here. TikTok <laughs> di didn't exist. It was like Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. So they, they were the two kind of main things. And so I would watch a lot of guys like Z's, uh, Greg Plitt, uh, Christian Guzman, who, you know, we'll, we'll talk about him later and, you know, how we both grow in the industry. But I would watch all these guys online and, you know, I would say, you know, I love following them. They're killing it. They're living such a good life. And no one in Ireland is doing this. There was no Irish online fitness scene. Now, at the same time, when I was getting like really into the industry and following it very closely, not posting content yet, I was pretty much failing in absolutely everything in life. Like I said, I was not academic. I barely scraped into college. And the course that I did get into, it was a business course, but I learned absolutely nothing. I could not get myself to study or to pass any exams. And so I failed first year. And then I repeated the year, which is like a, a stagnant feeling as it gets. Like you're literally making zero progress. <laughs> Second year, and I failed again. And I said, I can't do the same thing for three years in my, my prime years. I'm like 21 at this stage. Right. I said, I need to figure something out. I can't hold down a job. I was working retail, you know, these odd jobs here and there. I had like a nine to five in a, in a startup company, desk job at one stage as well. And I just couldn't hold it down. And I was so directionless in life. And I was super depressed at this time. I mean, I could not see what my future would look like. I had extremely dark thoughts and I was not the person that you see today. And I stripped everything back and I said, Rob, what's the only thing you've been slightly good at in your whole entire life? And that was fitness. And then so I went back to looking at all these guys in America killing it. And I said, there's got to be a way that I can make a living from doing bicep curls on the Internet. <laughs> and, and, 
<laughs> I just, I picked up my iPhone 5. Like, I can't believe now we have like iPhone 15 or something. Shit records in like 4K. It's crazy. I picked up my iPhone 5 and like, I just pretty much saw what these guys are doing. And I said, hey, this is full day of training and eating. And it's so funny to go into a little bit, bit deeper on the story as well. Um, my family, like, you know, the whole business went under my, you know, actually I came from like really good family. I went to really good school. I'm not playing the woe is me, but my family's business completely went under. They kind of went bankrupt essentially. And my whole family separated. My parents, you know, split up. All my sisters kind of moved out. So I'm in this and then to kind of make, uh, make money, make, make like things keep going. My family had to rent out all the rooms in the house. Yeah. So I'm in this house that used to be my family home. I'm now living with strangers. None of my family are there. I've got no job. I've got no one to give me a job. There's no daddy's business. There's none of that. I've got no third level education. Back is truly against the wall. Yeah, I'm depressed. I've got nowhere to go. And I said, I just have to make this fitness thing work. There is no other way about it. I need to figure out how to get into the fitness industry and grow. I have no other options. I will not be able to do anything else. And once your back is against the wall, you have no choice but to succeed. You can fail and fail and fail, but either way, you will you will keep going because you literally have no other option. And that's a, it's a great tactic is just remove all other options, a guaranteed way to win. And so I picked up my phone and I just started posting, you know, and again, my, my advice, I'm very proud. It's always been evidence-based. It's always been pretty good. And, mm-hmm. you know, I would always kind of be able to tell like what is a myth and, you know, what is what is real. I've never peddled any bro science. And so my advice was quite good from the get-go. Like the pro- production was not good, but the <laughs> advice was always, always good. And uh, I kind of just grew from there. And, you know, I started um, the first thing I ever did like to make money online was I sold an ebook for 30 euro. And the day that 30 euro hit my <laughs> PayPal account, I was like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. It's the one and, thing that, uh, that tiny little step that you'd get and you're like, right, this this could work. Yeah, no one <laughs> will ever, no entrepreneur will ever forget their first online sale. Yeah. Like now, now I'm like numb to it. I want to yeah. go back to that. I want to go, I was happier then. You know? That's amazing, and I so love that. When I made that and then of course went into coaching and everything yeah. and, you know, all the usual stuff, but that that's how it all started. I had no other option. Wow. Oh my God. I didn't know all of that about you. Like, I didn't know that, like, that's where it kind of stemmed from as well. And I think people have to hit rock bottom because there's a level of like comfort. And that's why people are always talking about step outside your comfort zone. It's like, you really do have to do that. And I think that's obviously crazy when you think about like a 30 euro program to where you are now. Like, does that make you think in your head sometimes, wait, what, like, are you quite grateful? Like, obviously you're grateful, but do you practice gratitude or anything like that? Extremely. So one of the the cool things that I find it makes life much more enjoyable. So this is that like that beginning, actually coming up to exactly 10 years in September, since I uploaded my, my first video. It does not seem like 10 years. I truly feel I'm not just saying this. I truly feel like oh, I'm just getting going. I'm only figuring out how to like scale and business and how to operate systems and how like finances work, how investing works. Like I feel I'm only becoming an adult now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Guys, I'm 32. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone right now is 22 watching this, <laughs> give, give it a few years. You're not gonna figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel I'm only getting started. And that 10 years, like I, I look at like some videos and posts and it's so long ago, but it just doesn't seem like it. It seems like realistically two or three years. And so it all still feels new to me. It mm. all feels surreal. Like when I you know, wake up in my house, I can't believe it. You know, <laughs> yeah. so so that is how I kind of keep uh, motivated. I keep happy. And you got to have that that surreal feeling. You know, it keeps that joy and that fun in life. Yeah, big time. And I think that's important too. Like the amount of younger people that will be listening and they just want it overnight. And it's like, oh, well, if I'm not there now, it's like, like that's 10 years. I'm the same. I'm like seven to eight years and things are coming together even more than expected. And when you get that little glimpse of hope that you're like, 
this is going to work. Or you know what? You're not going to say, will it, won't it work? It's like, it's going to work because I'm not exactly. going to. Exactly. I'm not going to. That's the mindset you got to have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also another thing, when I was kind of like, you know, starting out, like you know, we're going back 10 years. Now, a lot of people like complain about social media and all the negative effects. Completely true. I'm sure we'll get into that. You know, the comparison game. One of my favorite uh, quotes is don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10. You know, someone on a 10 year journey and you're just starting out, it can get discouraging. But with that said, the amount of like information out there nowadays, there's so much free game. If this wasn't available when I was just starting out, like podcasts weren't so like, like what we're doing now, they weren't so uh, common in a good way. Like, I mean, it's great that there's now more conversation going. Um, so that's, that's great to see then, but Back in the day when I started, like you gotta figure it out for yourself. Yeah. Like there was literally nothing back then. It was the YouTube. And I can't believe even Facebook, like Facebook, like <laughs> definitely don't use Facebook now. No, I no, I haven't logged in for it. ages. My, my Instagram <laughs> just automatically posts to Facebook. Yeah. I don't even log in. <laughs> Actually, it's so funny. I like I like saw it, like I logged in like a month ago or something. And I saw like there was some post that went viral on Facebook and I had like 50,000 likes or something. And it was just like from my Instagram. And I was like, oh, oh, nice. That, that, that <laughs> Facebook page is still going. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something there. Like those things that you would have been like, wow, ages ago, they don't mean anything to you. Like 15,000 likes at the minute, that meant nothing to you. We've seen it and you were like, right, that was cool. But it's not something that you're looking at all the time because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for that external validation for people to say, you're doing it right well done it's like if you're waiting for that pat on the shoulder you're going to be waiting a long time because the exactly people are home, you know yeah, and so people. i was actually um i think i was actually speaking to sean casey's sister um <laughs> about yeah. uh burnout and like she works uh, with him very closely and so if anyone listening right now i'm sure there's a lot and they work in the fitness industry or the online social media industry analytics are of course important when we get a banger post and we get some sales we get new clients Fantastic, obviously, but don't get too caught up on it because just like any business, it's just waves. You know, there's highs and lows and you want to be stoic no matter what. So, okay, post goes viral. You get loads of sales, get loads of money. Great. Have a shitty month. Also great. You just mm -hmm. want to remain in a, in a nice steady flow state because if you go through these highs and lows and you get really emotional, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get discouraged and you won't be in the industry for too long yeah and that's something there too with people that are kind of copying what someone else is doing because they got that amount of likes or they're getting that traction on it be yourself you yeah don't there's people follow. like literally scripting scripting <laughs> literally <laughs> That's something that people are doing and it doesn't sound authentic. It doesn't sound like yourself and people buy bullshit and people buy realness. And I think that's why people buy into you. They buy into my story. They buy into my community, my girls. And that's why I think what you're putting across, like if you're only setting up a business now, go deep on what the reason is and why you're doing it and stay true to that because that's something that people will always sniff out from the back. They know. They can smell it through the screen. <laughs> yeah, literally, they can. They're like, no, don't buy that. They don't trust it. And if someone yeah. trusts you, sales will just come. People want to think about money. It's like, think about being honest to yourself, being true to what you're selling. Would you buy it? Are you being honest with your product? Well, then, if you are, amazing. And that's obviously something I wanted to touch on as well, like your platform, your message. Can you summarize that together? For sure. So I want to touch on some a really good point that you just made there. And you yeah. said the word trust uh, in terms of business. And so, you know, I'll, of course, I'll get into fitness and everything on this. But uh, business wise, the, the number one tip, the biggest thing you can do if you run an online business or hey, even an in-person business, actually, yeah. is build trust. Why do you think Ben Francis is doing podcasts? Why do you think George Heaton, the diary CEO, Christian Guzman, the CEOs of these massive companies are putting their faces on the brand. And that is to build trust. It's to build that personal brand. It's never been more important, especially with like AI and all this shit nowadays. People are, so I, I this is what I said, right? Think about it. People are putting their credit card details yeah. into your website. Would you go up to a random person on the street and be like, here you go, sir. 
take yeah. it down. The CVV number's on the back. You would, <laughs> yeah. here's the expiry date. Take it away. You would not do that. So building the this trust and, you know, this repertoire and build, building authority in your industry, you're becoming an expert is the most important thing. So just really glad that you mentioned that. And again, if there's any business owners, that's that's my number one tip. So to go back to my message, it's always been, and this is super vague, super basic, but it's just, it's true, okay? Yeah. And you can actually, I've got receipts. You can go back to like one of my first ever Q and A's, like, you know, I, yeah. I'm like a baby. And I just say, I wanna impact as many people as possible through fitness. Because mm -hmm. I truly believe, <laughs> I'm Rob Lipson and I believe in fitness. <laughs> I truly believe the most important thing in life is your fitness and health. Yeah. Because once that goes, it doesn't matter if you're driving in a Lambo, it doesn't matter how rich you are, it doesn't matter about your lifestyle. If you can't get out of bed in the morning, if your your energy levels are gone, if you're not healthy, like God forbid, you probably get some proper illness. Yeah. The sick man in bed would swap virtually everything to have a fit healthy body if, if you could buy that and you also can't buy that so as you can tell i'm very i'm very passionate about it and like yeah you know people see the nice lifestyle and everything but i always train my ass off six days a week no matter what and i am stick to my diet for like i've been on the same diet for like 10 years pretty much i don't even fluctuate during the year always stay in shape fitness and health is the most important thing in the world you can't convince me otherwise to be honest so that's my message is to get more people on that hype. Yeah, amazing. And with that message there, you obviously have a community too. Do you have a lot of, is it all guys? Yeah. 96% <laughs> male <laughs> audience, Yeah, which is, which is fantastic. You know, which is, I, I'm sure you're the same. I can, I can right. tell like, you're always like girlies. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're the girls. <laughs> that's, ex that's exactly what you want because, um, from a well, it, it's just fun, you know. The, yeah. They can relate to you, you know. And when you meet people in person, it's you just get along well. But even again, from a business point of view, um, no guy is like buying creatine from a girl. No guy is buying like a bodybuilding programs for a girl, and the same vice versa. No girl is going to like a, a guy me for glute programs. You know, yeah. I have the option on, on yeah. the game plan. There is a booty builder option with the other <laughs> other programs. Again, it's like, you know, 90 percent men. And so it's really funny, actually. Um, I, I said this. I said this in the, in the talk yesterday. Um, I can spot one of my customers, like my avatar walking yeah. down the street. They're yeah. jacked and uh, they're probably wearing Alpha Leader Gymshark and they have a fade. Right. <laughs> Literally sum it up. Exactly. And they're a guy. <laughs> yeah, so so that that's my demographic right there. Yeah, uh, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah, yeah, I think community is such a big thing. That's why we're such we're big push on that and having that connection with someone that you can make virtually through a screen and online like that is just so powerful. It's amazing. That's what that's why I love social media. People talk about the negative sides of it and how it's so toxic. And it's like, well, you decide what you want to see on your screen. Oh, that that's so true, and so. One good thing I, I really like about fitness as well, you attract a positive audience, right? Yeah. I actually I actually get like very little hate online, no, nothing meaningful, you know? Mm -hmm. And because everyone is like a, a, just a dude who wants to improve their life, get jacked, you know, maybe even makes more money, you know, yeah. have, have, a life, have a life of freedom. So my audience is, is like super positive. Mm -hmm. And it, when I meet them in person, again, I can spot them so easily and they're all just, gents they're just really nice guys where if you build your audience on gossip and drama and just any kind of negative stuff like that and there's there's tons of channels like that even like there's news channels i think like watching the news is kind of negative you know people yeah. it's always it's always bad news you know oh. and so if you build your channel on that lay down with the dogs wake up with fleas you're mm -hmm. going to have a, a really bad audience you know yeah energetically what you put out is what you attract it's like people that meet partners and they're like they're kind of like their partner it's like well they're like your partner because that's what you attracted <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, i can't attracted. meet a good guy and it's like <laughs> well, about answer, yourself. <laughs> answer lies within <laughs> literally uh, that's it and that's actually something that i wanted to um kind of touch on as well 
like I'm sure you've probably had a lot of like girls and female attraction especially over the years with the like party and the fun kind of lifestyle as well yeah. and then you've obviously met Linda who's amazing and have set like have such a good relationship and how has that all kind of evolved and when was it like right this is the one yeah for sure so I like I, I was in, I've only ever been in two relationships in my entire life. And both of them are, are actually like five year relationships. So I'm definitely quite, a, you know, a relationship guy. You know, I I've, I had a, a period like about three years, maybe um, when I was like maybe 25, 26, 27, just before meeting Linda. And, you know, I went on tons of dates and it was great and it was fun and all that. But I definitely think I'm a relationship person, you know, that I'm, I'm probably calmer than a lot of people think, but you know, you gotta, you gotta kiss a few frogs before yeah. you, uh, you meet the real one. But so a lot of guys ask me this as well, because believe it or not, guys think they want to be a player. And most of us don't, we just want a good gym chick to yeah. go eat nice food with and travel around with. That's like mm -hmm. every guy's dream really. And so they're like, how do I meet a good quality girl? Brother, it starts with you. Yeah. It starts with you and the, the lifestyle you set yourself up to have. So if you create, well, first of all, if you're just a good person, you know, you're in shape, your finances are good, you're a positive guy, and then you create your lifestyle around that. So like you do cool shit, you know, you have like a little bit of freedom. You don't work a job you hate. Chicks, girls will see this and say, hey, I want to enter into that world. Yeah. And so instead of going chasing women, which is actually like a scarcity type of movement to do, to be chasing after someone. Instead of chasing attract, let, let girls or your other half, whatever this, you know, it, it applies both ways, let them come into your world. So that's how you'll, you'll meet a, an amazing partner. It always starts from within, take yeah. some accountability. You know, that's like yeah. everything in life. Everyone's looking to yeah. blame everyone and <laughs> just blame yourself for everything and, and life gets easier. That's exactly it. I think that's why working on yourself, whether it be even just physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever you need to connect with, you can't expect to connect with someone else on a level that you want them to be on if you're not on that level. And that's that's so important because, as I said, that energy is what you attract. But what has been one of like your biggest achievements overall? I'm obviously guessing Alpha Lee, maybe, or what, what has been like your biggest kind of win that you've had so far? So my prized possession is nothing physical. It's actually digital. And it's the collection of YouTube videos that mm -hmm. I have online. I've mm -hmm. uploaded, I think it's like 800 videos. Yeah. And like most of these are like 20, 30, 40 hour long videos. So like the amount of, if you add it up all the minutes, it's, it's probably like a hundred hours, way more than a hundred hours. But either way, having that able, I'm able to look back on my whole life is the most valuable thing to me. And I'm just going to say, it, I watch all my old videos tons of times. I, I feel like Linda will walk into the living room. I've got myself up on the TV. And I'm like, fucking you love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I can look back on, on me, like starting my journey when I was in that, that weird ass house or when I was just finally getting a little bit of success. I can like, it's like, you know, have you ever seen that Black Mirror episode where everyone can like recall their thoughts yeah. like really clearly on a screen? It's like that, you know, I have this collection of, of home movies essentially that I can always dip back on. And so that's my number one prized possession. And then the highlight would just be honestly the community and the audience that I've built. So you see, you know, the, the numbers on the screen and you're like sick, this is cool. But yeah. then you do like an in-person event, like an expo or, you know, I had an event in Marbella like uh, two weeks ago and it just makes you want to cry. Like it, it's nuts. Like you, you see like the amount of people that are all brought together through the love of fitness and people, they, they felt so nice. They followed your journey and they say, you help me get these results. And like, it goes really deep. People yeah. say like, I, I watch your videos on how to track your macros. Yeah. I lost yeah. 50 pounds and I, I stopped being depressed and I found the girl of my dreams. And it just, that's that's the best feeling in the world. So I, I'm not sure like if I can pinpoint one highlight, 
of course, um, you know, getting with like Alf lead and becoming in with that crew and Ghost and everyone, which are, you know, very, they're kind of like brother and sister brands in a way. Uh, and just being like recognized um, in the industry and respected is just, it's obviously a dream, but it's tough to pick that like one, one moment. Yeah, it's kind of a summary of it all. It, it would be hard to pinpoint, but I think yeah. that that's definitely something that you can look back. You should definitely do like a big timeline of a movie and put it all together. That's coming. That's, it I'm, I'm like putting crazy work into it. Like it's going to be like a documentary of the last 10 years. Uh, so it, it's going to be nuts. Like it's like a movie, you know, like yeah. and it's like a, it's like a gym movie. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That would be unreal. That needs yeah, to no, be that's going to be somewhere. dropping in September. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm real amazing. And with Alpha Lee as well, like you are like, obviously you get approached when you've got a following with a lot of brands. I don't do any partnership or anything like yeah. that until I really feel like deep about it. I won't do anything for pay promotion. I think at the start of my journey, I was quite confused with like getting into the industry where am I fitness? Am I kind of influency? Am I posting clothes? Like what am I? I couldn't really yeah. pinpoint until I realized that posting dresses and people sending me stuff wasn't making me happy that wasn't who I am did you kind of have anything like that along the way where you were like why am I posting this or did you kind of stay true to saying no because it is that, <laughs> that's that's just so perfect what you said like I used to especially like around my little love island period yeah. I used to like yeah I, I would always actually enjoy and use the brands. I've never promoted a brand that I wouldn't use myself, but it definitely swayed a little bit, like yeah. from not just direct it's fitness. Crazy. Whereas now the only sponsorships I have are Ghost and Alfleet, which is just so in line with me. Like it's so in line with my vision, my audience. But along the ways, I, I've always kept my integrity. And I've always said, like since day one, I will never promote or use or recommend a brand that I genuinely wouldn't use myself. But as I've got older, I've got, you know, niche down and trimmed off a lot. And, you know, I had my that little period, the Love Island. I never, I don't think I've ever promoted tea whitener. Definitely not skinny tea. <laughs> I've always remained quite true. And it's definitely always had a fitness focus, but I've, I've narrowed things down a lot. And yeah. so my advice with sponsorships as well. So I'm actually putting together like um, a really in-depth business course for just something I would give to my 21 year old self and for people starting out in the industry. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. That's currently like taking up a lot of my time. It's going to be like super in-depth. And I just recorded the na navigating sponsorships part of it. If you do want to go that route. Personally, I think it is, if you're using a product anyways, like if you're using whey protein, creatine, pre-workout, there's zero reason to not, you know, accept a sponsorship from a brand that you are using daily anyways. If it's like um, a gym clothing brand that you literally wear every day, there's no, it's, it's, you don't even have to promote it, you know? Yeah. So in my contract, my Alphine Ghost contract, I have no required posts. Okay. I, I have none. They just go wear it, wear it and use it as you do. So in return, they actually get daily posts, you know, because I, I use it every day, but it's very natural and organic. And so if you're, you, you're starting to work with a brand that you use anyways, I'm all for it. And the way to get like the best contract, the best deal is if they approach you or you approach them, say, Hey, give me a link or a code and let's do one month trial. I'll, you know, promote you guys. And let's see how many sales I make, because that's ultimately what the sponsorship is about. You bringing yeah. more sales and revenue to this company, and then you will sort out a fair agreement. Because there's a few like people, especially like micro influencers, who will have like a hardcore following, like a really like engaged following. And these brands are ripping them off. They're like not paying them. They're just giving them free product. And they're like making crazy sales without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're, you and the brand are, are benefiting each other mutually. Yeah, alignment is a big thing too. And with um, Alpha Lee, like what's different from what they do on Ghost in comparison to anyone else out there? Because like you've got My Protein, you've got Gymshark. We can talk about all the competitiveness, but yeah. with yourself, why Alpha Lee and why Ghost? Like what is the connection there? For sure. So I used to be like sponsored by my protein for years is on all the ads and the billboards and everything. They, they're really good to work with. I actually did really, really like them. Um, and yeah, I've been offered pretty much every sponsorship, Gymshark, everything. They're, they're like, I don't know how to say this. They're like, 
the same th- they're like we'll double your contract from athlete if you leave them and i was like christian at this stage we're, we're best friends so i was like no nah, i can't but uh, now, now they've like Gymshark have surpassed me so much. They probably wouldn't even look twice at me. <laughs> but I've gotten all these offers from virtually like every main brand in the industry. But I just think that it's actually the people behind the brands. Like I'm best friends with Christian. I was at his wedding like two months ago. He's coming here to Marbella in September. Uh, you know, we were in Dublin last year shooting that like Alfleet documentary. The owner's a ghost. They're like, less on social than christian of course dan and ryan are their names but they're absolute legends like we have partied till the early hours together in las vegas like yeah. we share so much crazy stories so of course the products are they're, they're like the, the best pretty much yeah. like you know it's like as, as good as good as it gets but it's actually the people behind the brand that i'm i'm just really good mates with at this stage so that that's kind of the the main like driving just driving force when it comes to signing with them yeah that staying true to yourself and staying true to what you believe in and also loving the product too. That makes it yeah. a big de- deal. What yeah. has been, um like when we look from the outside, like people think and paint the perfect picture of you living with the house and with this and with that. And th- they paint the perfect picture of like, it's all been amazing. And like we, we show a highlight on our pages of where we've kind of started um, even a day to day, we post the highlights. We don't post the, the downsides of things like is there anything that has kind of been a setback from a reality of course there's been setbacks but is there anything that you can kind of touch on that you're like this kind of happened and this is how I got out of it because there will be people that will be able to relate to that as well yeah for sure so a, a quick one on the highlight reel so true but at the same time it's like if you're like crying or like freaking out having a panic attack you're not gonna like prop up your phone and, and like start <laughs> crying and post it well some fucking people do <laughs> but but so you know we we say social media is a highlight reel but uh, of course it is you know when you're in uh, hysterics you're not gonna document it you know so yeah. the, i i find that you know it's fair enough but it is completely true and then in terms of failures virtually every single thing that i've tried at I've failed initially, like virtually everything. There's, there's been, there still is days where I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm not going to make it. You know, I, I'm going to, this is all going to be over soon. I, I can't maintain this. There are just some days, no matter how successful you are, where you just feel so low. And I'm, I'm a positive person and I still have many days where I'm, I'm freaking out, you know, and that's why it's so important to have people like, you know, Linda's always fantastic. And, you know, just, she's like a, a cheerleader, a 24 seven cheerleader who just tells me I can do absolutely anything. And that is like, that's more valuable than like any business coach or anything. So that's how I deal with that. But there's been so much stuff, like even like personal stuff with like my, my family and everything. Like I, I don't, don't actually come from the, the most uh, classic, family like the most like little perfect happy families you know there, there's been a, a lot of hard moments there's been like cancer in my family as well um what one of like the the like ha- hardest moments was when I was growing up and I, I like wasn't even that that young like I remember it perfectly and like my my mom had like really bad cancer and she was trying to hide it from me so I wouldn't get worried and she had no hair and I walked in on her with, with, and she was bald. And I was like, what the fuck happened? And she, she had been wearing a wig for a few months to try and hide it from me. And seeing your, one of your parents chemo bald, it's like, it just hits you like a, a ton of bricks. So there's, there's been horrible moments, you know, in the last couple of years. But, and that's, that's part of life. I, I virtually don't know anyone who has just had coasted through life and had these nice moments even with this house right i <laughs> I, I didn't get proper planning permission for something i got a seventeen thousand euro fine <laughs> and these but just like, pop up out of the blue and it's like they they just happen and they you have like, to deal with it <laughs> i was literally like <laughs> I got, I'm like, oh, fuck I opened that letter. I nearly had a heart attack. Yeah. Like, yeah. But... <laughs> There's so many things that happen on a daily basis. And you just, it's about just dealing with it there and then. And it's like, my mom is a big one for saying, 
like worrying brings nothing care of with stress. Oh, like, why so worry? that's that's the best one. Worrying puts you through the situation twice. Oh yeah, I heard that one. And I was like, oh my god. That god that was yeah, I think though this is important for um like for lads that are listening, whether what I, whatever age you are. Like my uncle suffered very badly with his mental health and then took his own life. And he just worried all the time. And by the way, he had his, uh, he had everything, by the way, with money, yeah. the fame, the football, everything. And it wasn't enough. And I can't stress enough to people how important it is to speak up and talk to someone or even to like with therapy or anything like that. Have you done anything like that? Or do you touch on anything there? So- so a quick one on your your uncle, right? Yeah. That's the the fact that you mentioned like he was super successful and he had it all. D- really driven guys like myself, your uncle. Oftentimes we're so hard on ourselves because even when we're doing great, we're like, it's not enough. Yeah. You know, and, and so oftentimes the most successful and driven guys are some of the, you know, are suffering so badly. Yeah, and, and you literally think it's going to be the opposite, but it's yeah. not. So that's, that's very interesting that you said that. In terms of, of therapy, I've actually never had it like properly and I want to start. It's actually something, it's actually on my like goal because apparently the, the best thing, the best way to go about it is do it before you need to do it. Oh my it's God. like, do it. don't, don't wait until you're obese to go to the gym. Yeah. Do, it, do it now and it's a lot easier to maintain. So that was like the best advice I heard. And that's made me, you know, I'm going to, I'll probably, I'm going to start off with a few online classes. Yeah. yeah. And cause like in Marbella, I don't know. It's, fucking, it's like the therapy's like here. Oh <laughs> the nightlife's great. Yeah. Know, like, <laughs> There's okay. so many people though online that you could definitely go to. And I think yeah. it's like that wound and that everyone has something inside them that they can work on. And I actually went through a bit of a spiritual awakening here in Miami. I went to an event and I was a little bit skeptical at the start. I was kind of like, like the Americans can be a little bit far yeah. back. Sorry, you back. Bit up my girl. But <laughs> my whole my friend, is America, by the way. Don't kill me, guys. <laughs> no, but they, they're just, it's just two totally different worlds is what I've experienced since I'm here. And I went to that event and I've literally had breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough from just really going deep on things that have happened in my life like earlier in the years that you would never even think about because as Irish people, we tend to move on because you've you've kind of dealt with that already especially like my nanny my mom they're like would you stop now that has happened years ago move swiftly on but these things affect you in everything that you do and when you go deep and you like look at like things that are going on inside and why you react in certain ways why you work towards things what's the beliefs that you have everything changes and you start to see yourself in a totally different light and it's no one wants to go to the deepest darkest places of their mind yeah no one wants uh, to do that. And, and you know what? Apparently, like what you just said, apparently it all starts in your childhood. And like whether you realize it or not in your subconscious. And like I kind of really briefly touched on there at the beginning of the podcast, like I I did one of my, so you're going deep in here. You're getting me to go deep. Yeah. One of my first like memories as a human was sitting in like a, a family counseling room, like, you know, with, with my family and everything. So there's probably some underlying shit there that I, I need to dig up, you know? Yeah. And it's it's not, there's probably, there is. And if you know, it's kind of there. It's like, we run off um, fumes all the time. We run off that goal of like, especially as entrepreneurs and that high, high performance life that you live, you always want to become that 1% better. So why would I want to slow down and go backwards and have to even look at that? Because that's not that's, a right now. That's so true. It like, we're, we're always very like forward driven. And like, we're, we're always like thinking about the next, next, next year. Oh, I don't have time for for that shit. So wait, the event that you went to, was it like a religious event or is it like, no. what, what was it called? Like, Everyone was like, were you at a cult? And I was like, yeah, yeah. No. I was like, well, I was like, if you want to call it a cult, it was the best cult that I was at. And it was honestly, look up Danny Morrill. Okay. I've signed up to the mentorship now for the year because I was literally after the three days I had the first day we went through like everything that you, your mind controls and kind of what we're programmed to. And even from a young age as a little boy, 
you might be circumcised and it's like did he give you permission to do that no. yeah 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 and you, you it doesn't even register with you you know yeah or a little girl getting her ears pierced did she ask you to do that no she didn't so there's small things of course your parents are your parents and they're the ones that are telling you what you are going to do but then you go to school someone tells you what you're going to learn your teacher like tells you what to do then you go to a guidance counselor they're telling you what career to go in we've never had the choice to make our own decisions up for ourselves and that put a lot of things into perspective for me at the start of the event we done and um, have you ever done breath work yeah yeah I've actually uh, gone quite into that in like the last year really yeah so that was kind of like what we done we done that like really deep breath work like it was like 30 40 minutes like of going back into your past and things came up to me that I, I didn't even realize like I had this chaotic vision at the start of my mom and dad absolutely like going at each other and just carnage going on that it was chaotic and me and my brother were just sitting on the couch we were so scared yeah. and there was just so many things and I remember I couldn't cry and I was like I'm like I've been living in my masculine for like a good few years right I have like of course you're running two business a lot of gym girls are lot, yeah lot of, and you're the independent physical. yeah right. like it's kind of but when you step into your feminine you're in a totally different energy do you know what I mean? So it's like the man as well. Like if anything has happened in your life, there was so many people that were there that were actually male as well. And like they went through different things that have happened to them or like not being able to speak up and how you're meant to kind of act like the hard, the the guy that you're meant to be and the provider and this and that. And it's like deep down, these men just broke down. Like I have never seen it. Look them up, Danny Morrill and okay. like, event. It's called Awakening. I actually think they have one. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've I've heard of it. Like I've it that was, name sounds quite recognizable. Crazy. Like it was just the deepest. You go into the deepest, darkest places of yourself, and you look at like what has happened, and you're like, maybe that that is actually why I'm like this. And everything comes from the feminine, obviously your mom, and then the masculine, your dad. So what's the going on there that happened in your life that someone didn't give you that that's why you're being like that person right now and yeah. it's like those things are like people think it's quite it's it's a little bit crazy to be touching on stuff like that but it's like that's why you're the way you are that's why you believe the things about yourself that you do and when you kind of work on those things on a deeper level oh my god everything has just changed massively for me in the last like three weeks of being here from wow. going to that event Jeez, uh, you, you, uh, this is probably why you want to move to Miami. It's oh, I'm like, staying here now. I'm not going. I'm like, I'm yeah. staying. And uh, actually, something that just came up to me there, comparison is something that I just want to quickly touch on. Like, online, as we said, it's a highlight of someone's life. It's not what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know the lows, and you just see this perfect picture. But, like, think about comparison here with, like, your body, your physique, money. Go to Dubai, guys, and go oh. to Miami. Come here and you meet. A tw I'm meeting these people, and I'm just like, right, I'm going back to my test. Yeah, oh, go to Marbella, even. That's the holy trifecta right there. Marbella, God. Miami, Dubai. Literally, like, it's Miami, London, Dubai, yeah. and maybe New York or something like that. Yeah. Places put you so, like, when you speak to these people, you're like, wow I'm not even like touching the surface right now but yeah. then you need to put it back into perspective and not compare and be like oh my god I'm not there and they're this age and they're way ahead it's like forget what they're doing because it actually has absolutely nothing to do with you what could you do better to improve your life where are, what are the three things every day that you can improve on but from comparison I'm sure you've had a lot of that as well where do you feel like it was more like financial was it like your physique was it anything in particular that you were kind of comparing yourself to because that's easy to get caught up on yeah so uh, one of my favorite quotes i mentioned earlier is you know don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 10 and it's it's literally a pointless exercise yeah. but to, to go back to go a little step further when you actually okay think about humanity think of the timeline of humanity mm -hmm. in the like 70s and 80s and 90s even People would still, you know, they could visually look at their neighbor or someone walking down the street and they see the fancy car, the house, the, the watches. It never before has it been so in our face. 
it is like virtually like with you 24 or seven. It's absolutely crazy. You can like see what restaurant someone is eating at like right now. <laughs> like, like, why am, why am I eating like a bowl of beans in my <laughs> kitchen? You know, wearing like a smelly wife feeder. You know, it's, it's like instant. And this has never happened in human history. So the human mind and the human body, it's not evolved for this. Like the, the evolution has not caught up in the last 10 years. Like, okay, the mad one, the internet is 30 years old. What the, what the hell? Like smartphones are only like, what, 20 years old? Like, I remember I was alive when the, the first iPhone came out and we were all like, we're like apes. Okay. We're like apes looking at technology. We're like, what? what's that? Like hitting it? Like that scene out of Zoolander? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's in the computer. So we're like not evolved for this. And so you need to train yourself, prepare yourself to not take it that seriously, or you are just going to drive yourself haywire because it is, it is gone so fast, the comparison game. So you need to take a step back. And what I like to do, and this is the best mindset you can have is when you see someone killing it, you see someone with nice things, use it as motivation and inspiration. Just whenever you find yourself getting jealous, which is normal, just kind of snap out of it, okay? You know, take a step back and say, "Is if I do really want this, a lot of times people, they don't even want the thing they're jealous of. If I do really want this, let let me figure out how to get there. And then let me even like look at this guy as a blueprint. Fuck it, maybe I'll reach out to him and and chat to him. Get him in my circle. There's so much more than you can do than than just get jealous and sit and stew. So that's my best advice. Uh, Prepare for it because it's only going to keep getting worse, but learn how to handle it properly. Yeah, use it as fuel to to your fire. Don't let it like put you down and be thinking, oh my God, why are they there and I'm not? It's like you just have to use it as that push forward for yourself that if yeah. someone else can do it i can do it that's my yeah, mindset same, same with physique, a physique and mm-hmm. everything you know yeah um so to just summarize up the podcast i'm sure we could probably go back and forward oh, for ages yeah. we can keep going um but what advice would you give to like anyone at home especially men this is something I want to touch on. Like, what advice can you give to men that something you wish you could have done a little bit earlier that may help them in terms of physique, first of all, in terms of maybe business and that growth, and then in terms of themselves on a, okay. deep, on a deeper level? Okay, right. Let's let's start with physique. Okay. Yeah. So so first of all, one thing that I'm really grateful for that I did is when I like was getting into the gym, as I mentioned at the start of the podcast, it was just get bigger and stronger to play rugby. And so this whole, I guess you'd call it diet culture, wasn't around. It, me and all my friends were just eating loads and yeah. like, let's get big. And like, we didn't fucking care about abs. Yeah. yeah. And like nowadays, like all these kids, like they're teenagers, they're stunting their growth from putting themselves in a deficit and trying to look like David Laid and, you know, whoever it is. And, and they've like nothing to cut down to. So like build, you know, don't just go straight into dieting and don't worry about it. Don't get obsessed with your body. Like I didn't even think about it. And it served me so well that when I did start to get into like aesthetics and bodybuilding and all that, I had something to cut down to. Yeah, and I, I wasn't like obsessive about it. So so that's advice for young guys with physique. Obviously, if you're overweight or obese, you know, childhood obesity is rising, of course, then, you know, lose lose body fat. But if you're just like starting out in the gym, don't starve yourself. So that's the advice that I would give to the younger generation now. And again, it's because we, we didn't have Instagram and now they do. So it, it's crazy. And then so the next one was on a more like personal development and spiritual thing. So the advice that I would say to myself is don't be afraid to take the road less traveled. Actually, it's kind of better if you take the more difficult route. If you have two options, uh, one of them's the easy one and one of them's way harder, 10 times out of 10, you're going to be better off taking the harder route. Every, Every single time you're going to grow more as a person and you're going to get bigger results. So what freaked me out so much Going back to the very beginning, podcast has taken a nice loop. Like it's it's flowed very well. Like, you know, as we're ending with, with some of the beginning, it's fantastic. 
So going back to it, I thought there was like no other way to succeed in life apart from like, go, go to college, do the internship, uh, get, do the, the nine to five, you know, and just literally the exact same stage that everyone follows. But I did the complete opposite. You know, I, I bought the holiday home first before buying your real home. I do everything the opposite. Yeah, and that has, that has served me very well. When there was no one doing a fitness YouTube in Ireland, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the complete opposite. And that served me so well. So that's the advice I would give uh, on a personal development level is uh, do the opposite of what everyone else is doing and take the hard route. Amazing. Love that. That was a really, really good summary. And for yourself, for the final question, when you summarize back here, we reflect back on like that timeline of where you started and where you are now. What is the piece of your puzzle that you feel like you need to go a little bit maybe deeper on, work on? Is there something there that you feel like being fully transparent? This is what I feel like I want to do for myself now, not business or anything, but for yourself. Yeah, I definitely need to stop rushing uh, through life. I need to be, um, uh, I'm working, I, I'm calmer than most people think, but I need to be a little bit more chilled. And that's um, a funny thing about like me and Linda's relationship. She's like super relaxed and laid back in a good way. And I'm definitely more like strung up. Look at my fucking veins popping out of my neck here, looking like Frankenstein. So <laughs> you know, I, I, I need to relax a little bit more and be less wound up. Eddie, there's always a yin to the yang, isn't there? There's two. Exactly. Ones. That's how it but, goes. Yeah, for sure. But thank you so much for coming on. I know people are going to take a lot from this. I'll leave, obviously, your Instagram, YouTube. I'm sure everyone follows you anyways. I'm easy to find. Like, there's actually no one else. The only other person in Ireland called Rob Lips, it's my dad. He literally named, hey. named me after him. <laughs> what the hell? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. easy to find. No, you're an inspiration and you really drive so many of us, even not even just Irish people, but from an outsider's perspective of how far you've come. And I wish you all the success going forward with everything that you do in your life as well. And thank you for coming on. Boom. Thank you so much, Kira. And honestly, I follow your journey very closely and it's very inspiring to see someone else from Ireland doing great things. So thank you so much for having me on. Do this. Thank you.